Thank goodness we have natural lighting today because as you can tell, I'm not in my usual setup. I'm over at my parents' dog sitting. Uh, I don't know if I still will be by the time that you see this video, but regardless, uh, I didn't bring my ring light with me because I'm not doing that. So thank you to mother nature today for providing me with natural light. I feel like being a hater today. So <laughs> I want to talk about books that I thought I would love, but I ended up hating because I also am going to do books that I thought I would hate, but ended up loving. But then when I was like going back and forth on which one I felt like filming today, I'm like, you know what? I feel like complaining. So that's what we're going to do today. So I don't know. I maybe have about like 10 books. Some of these I didn't like hate. I just didn't really like, they didn't like live up to my expectations in my head. Some of these I legitimately hated and I'm ready to kind of like rant a little bit about them. Just a disclaimer, I shouldn't have to do this but I'm going to anyways. If you love any of these books, this is not a personal attack on you in any way, shape or form. I'm so glad that they worked for you. They did not work for me. Books are very subjective and yeah, I just didn't like them, but feel free to like whatever you want to like. First up is one that I'm very sad that I hated. Um, and that is Bison I Rise by Cora Riley. It is part one and part two. Both parts should be here because I didn't like either of them. And I was so excited for this series. So if you don't know, this is the next generation series of Cora Riley's like mafia world that she has the Kamara Chronicles and the Born and Blood Chronicles this is like the next gen and I honestly haven't even read I think there are two or three more books out past this point and I haven't even read those because I disliked these that much and that makes me so sad because her mafia universes are some of my favorites like some of my favorite mafia books ever but this was such a flop. So this one is following one of the daughters of the Capo of New York. So I was really looking forward to that. I'm like a daughter in the mafia world and it is captor captive. And then like the guy in it, the hero is the son of a rival motorcycle club. I think his name is Maddox and he's nicknamed Mad Dog, but he's the most bland piece fun cooked chicken I've ever met. This as a whole was just such a a flop. There was like no romance. It was very like insta lovey, even though it's like captor captive There was like no build up, no chemistry between these characters. These characters themselves didn't even have any like pizzazz or personality. They were both very flat. I was really looking forward to because Marcella ends up like becoming a woman in the mafia and like kind of being inducted. And like that's a big deal, you know, like a woman being inducted into the mafia, especially because Core Riley's mafia world is very much like old school kind of mafia, which is why I really like them because it's kind of like fun to read about that but so like that's a big deal and it was just like so glossed over she like barely did anything in the mafia it was just all a no all a no but I should be getting like the little like flutters you know I've seen my old favorite characters and I didn't even get that I felt like nothing reading these books except for disappointment and anger so yeah I do still want to read I know um Rebo and Serafina is one of their kids is book is out I think is it Greta's book is maybe out so I do want to read that one because Remo and Serafina are my favorite couple but I don't know guys I don't know I'm not feeling these I'm not feeling this series next up is one that I didn't end up hating I just didn't love and I still don't quite know why and that's Does It Hurt by H.G. Carlton I was really looking forward to this release because I love the cat and mouse duet so much like haunting and hunting adeline were some of my favorite books well hunting adeline specifically was in my top 10 last year and like i love this cover i thought the premise sounded interesting everything about this book i was really much looking forward to and then nikki and i ended up reading it for out of bounds and we both were kind of like we can't really tell you why we didn't like it. We just like didn't vibe with it. And that's how I still feel to this day about this book. I think I ended up rating it three and a half stars. And like, I would still stick by that. Like I still liked it enough. And like the end was kind of fun. It was kind of creepy and like suspensey. It's about these two characters who they end up, they hate each other and they end up getting stranded on this creepy lighthouse island together after their boat crashes in a storm. And there's this like creepy innkeeper there that's like, Mm, he's just sketch and it's them like waiting basically for like a month until the supply boat comes back out and like these creepy things are happening on the island and obviously they hate each other because the one tried to steal the other's identity it's like a whole thing so you would think it'd be really fun but for some reason I just didn't connect with this book at all I didn't connect with the characters I wasn't invested in the story the one thing I will say is that this is enemies to lovers and this is true enemies to lovers like these two do take a long time of hating each other until they finally get over that and it turns into love and like they want to protect the other so I did like that aspect of it because I hate when it's enemies to lovers and they're like lovers by what 20% I'm like no give me the banter for longer and these two have that 
But for some reason, I just, I didn't like love this book. I don't know what it, I truly don't know what it is. So that's why I felt bad rating it low too. Cause I'm like, I don't think it's a bad book by any means. I just, for some reason, like, I don't know. It just didn't work for me. And I was really disappointed by that because like I said, Haunting and Hunting Adeline were like such knock it out of the parks for me. But yeah, I don't know what it was about this one. Next up, this one I legitimately hated hate it i don't even know what i rated it on goodreads i don't know if i rated it one or two stars i might have rated it two stars because i felt bad giving it one but i hated it and i thought i would love it and that's bliss by a.r breck so i read where the mountains meet the sea last year by the same author and that book blew me away blew me away i talked about it quite a lot since i read it i posted about it on my instagram like i love that book with my whole heart and soul it was like my top five book of last year so an out of bounds book club oh i guess wow we've had a couple um flops i guess for out of bounds but once again for out of bounds we chose to read bliss because it sounded kind of interesting kind of like out of bounds ish it sounded like it was gonna be a little love triangle-y between this girl and then her new like foster siblings that she like got kind of like pulled into after her parents died so it was like okay maybe it's gonna give like some credence energy and like it, we were just really excited about it and it sucked sucked and I'm so sorry I'm so sorry A.R. Breck I, I hope you don't see this I hope none of the authors see this but especially I love where the mountains meet the sea you created magic with that book however this one I wanted to bang my head against my kindle it was so off the writing felt like a completely different writer the dialogue was choppy the descriptions were weird the pacing was off like certain things moved really fast and certain things moved really slow both of the heroes like all of a sudden she was in love with both of them and like nothing had even happened like there was no reason for her to be in love with either of them and then there's something that happens like part way through the book and then there's this incident and one of the heroes she's like oh my god it's my fault it's not her fault but she just like says that because she's like in shock and the, one of the heroes is like it is your fault i hate you go away and like they stop talking for a while dude i can't even tell you how bizarre this book was how bad it was the characters were unlikable the story itself like the idea was there but the execution was just so flat I it truly felt like I was reading a different author if you would have not put like an author name on this book and where the mountains meet the sea I would like never have thought that they were by the same person I would have been like that's a lie so I don't know I don't know what it was with this book but I well I don't know what it was I know what it was I have a lot of complaints about this book and I've ranted about it before it's just an absolute no from me and really makes me want to read a third A.R. Breck book though to be like is where the mountains meet the sea the outlier or is like bliss the outlier like well, what are we dealing with here you know okay next up another one that I <laughs> I obviously did not like either and that is the Broken Bond series by Jay Bree so actually I read the first three books in this series because me and some of my friends on here we were doing a read-along for the Bonds the Tie series if I would have been reading it by myself I never would have got past book one but because I'm a team player, I'm like, I'm going to keep going along with this until all five of us were like, yeah, no, we all hate this. Let's stop. So we did. But I got through the first three books before we like called off the readathon. So this one is like a fantasy why choose romance. And it sounded so good. It sounded so cool. And I've seen so many people love it and binge it and be like, this is just amazing. So I had really high hopes going into this series. We all kind of did because we all saw how much people loved it. <sighs> okay so the main character insufferable I did not like her whatsoever here's one of my biggest problems with this series is I had a writing professor in college that they gave a piece of advice that I really like I really agree with and stand by in terms of writing and that is if your main character has a secret that they keep on alluding to you need to expose that and like by the end of the first third of the book because otherwise it's not like the payoff is not going to be what you think it's going to be readers are going to get annoyed and unless if it's a thriller where that is the main plot twist don't just have this character constantly being like but they know something but like they don't know something that I do know or something like don't keep the reader in the dark on that as well and that frustrated the hell out of me with this series because it felt like every single time a question arose Ollie would be like well that's just because they don't know yet they don't know about my past they don't know this they don't know that and I'm like you better tell me or I'm done and by the third book there were still like no answers and even things that we did get answers to were such like it was such a letdown like I Oh my, I can't even express like the amount of like buildup that half these things had that for them the payoff, I was like, there is no payoff for this. 
I didn't like the world building either. I didn't think it was that fun. The, like I said, the heroine was just annoying to me. All of the guys, I didn't like any, the one that I liked, I think his name was Knox. He was like the meanest one. He was the only one that I was intrigued by the rest of them. I was like, I just don't care. And it's like about her being bonded to these guys. But then they had like these interesting powers that kind of like manifested, but I didn't feel like we got enough explanations. Like all, of, I'm like, maybe I'm just not like, reading thoroughly enough or something or i'm just not understanding but like all five of us collectively were confused and four of us read a lot of fantasy so it's not even like we're all romance readers who like don't really read a lot of fantasy and we're kind of thrown off by it no like all of us were confused and all of us had like the same issues with it so i just absolutely hated this series i'm so glad that we stopped doing the readathon and Ugh, I don't even want to think about it anymore. Next up, one that I was just so disappointed by, and that is The Game Plan by Macaulay Smelter. Y'all know Sweet Dandelion. Love that book so much. Like, I will defend that book until the very end. This book is an absolute no. So this is a hockey romance, and it's a new adult one, so they're in college, and it's fake dating and stuff, so it has all of the, like, exciting tropes. The execution was just so flat nothing happens in this book it's very boring the heroine and the hero like I didn't really feel much of a connection to them or like between them it was just bland like bland is the best way that I can describe it and then there is one of the most annoying third act breakups in here she just like the heroine just like immediately believes the worst in the hero after he's proven to her time and time again that he's not like this image that is out there about him but she just like sees one article and is immediately like boom you're like dead to me. And then when it's cleared up, the hero is not even like mad at her for dropping him at all. He's not even like, hey, I told you that I told you like I was telling you the truth and you didn't believe me. He wasn't even mad. He was just like, yeah, take me back. Oh my God. I did not like this book at all. Okay, another one that I fucking hated. Pucked by Helena Hunting. So I don't even remember. I think it's brother's best friend in hockey. I don't really even remember the circumstances around this book that much, except that I just hated every single thing about it. Um, she often referred to certain areas on her body as a beaver. And I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. I, what was that? What was that? I think it was like trying to be funny and it wasn't. I, do, I didn't like either of the characters. I didn't like anything about this book I, when I remember reading it. And honestly, if I was reading it now, I would have DNF'd. But back, I mean, I still don't DNF a lot, but I would have DNF'd after she called something a beaver the first time. And I should have done that the first time that I was reading it and I didn't. And it's a regret of mine. Okay, next up, this one I didn't hate. It's just I was really let down by and that's Throttled by Lauren Asher. So this is a Formula One romance brothers rival romance and this series is obviously super super popular Lauren Asher is a very popular author and I was really excited to go into this book mostly because of the brothers rival thing and because of Formula One um my family is really big Formula One fans so I was like this is kind of cool like I haven't seen this in a romance book yet and this I just remember being like pretty underwhelmed by I don't remember like anything super exciting happening I don't really remember caring about either of the characters or like their relationship or their romance I just don't don't really think that anything exciting happened in it and I was really looking forward to like the rivals to lovers kind of dynamic between the two of them and I don't really even remember that being that strong I just overall remember being very very underwhelmed by this book when I was really looking forward to it so it's not a hate it's just I didn't like it and I and I went into it really thinking that this was going to be like a knockout for me and the other one, also by Lauren Asher, is The Fine Print. This one, the longer I sit on it, the more I hate it. <laughs> this one is a billionaire romance and it's like workplace and it's all around like Disney, which I love Disney. I did the Disney college program. I used any excuse to bring that up because it was just like the best. I loved it and I love Disney. So I was really excited for this book and those elements of it, I really enjoyed. But oh my God, this hero in here was he sucked. He sucked. He was so grumpy for no reason. He was so rude for no reason. And I'm like, I don't even remember the heroine's name, but I was like, you can do so much better than this flop of a dude. Like, yes, he has money, but like, you don't need him. You don't need him. And oh, I don't know. I just remember that being like insufferable. Again, there's like a third act breakup. And again, I was kind of like, just break up. Like, honestly, you shouldn't even be together. And yeah, I just did not like this book. And again, I went into it thinking that I really would. And I just didn't. Next up. Oh, okay. I did hate this one and I thought I would love it. And that's Gabriel's Inferno by Sylvan Reinard. So y'all know here, 
student teacher is my trope. I love student teacher. I That's like one of my favorite tropes of all time. I, if you tell me something student teacher, I'm pretty much going to read it. And this one is kind of like one of the most well-known student teacher romances. And it is traditionally published. So I had to like check it out from my library. And I was just like really excited to get this book in. Flop. Flop behavior all across the board. The hero is so whiny and like annoying and so like broody and like oh my god how could anyone ever love me shut up and the heroine was so like i'm so innocent and like oh my gosh i can't even believe that a man would ever look this way at me but yet every man like is in love with her i couldn't with the two of them and they like have known each other but he doesn't remember her so there's like that past between them that again that then as he's like remembering he's like how could i or forget it's so dumb I didn't like it they were both insufferable and it's all this buildup of him being like well I can't like be with you because I'll like ruin you and whatever and then at the end he like takes her on a bougie vacation to like be with her but then if I'm remembering right I don't even know if they like end up being together it fell so flat it was so like extra too in the way that it was written about trying to be like making all of these references to like dante's inferno and i was just like this just this just is not for me it's not for me and i even listened to the second book on audiobook because again i was trying to be like i like to finish series no I shouldn't have even put myself through the second book. These are a no. Next up is Stepbrother Dearest by Penelope Ward. This one I read very, very early on in my reading journey. And I don't know if I read it now, if I would like it any better. But honestly, I still think I wouldn't because it was so boring to me. So this one obviously is a sibling romance, which I love. But if I'm remembering right, there's something that happens at the beginning of this one. And then there's like a time jump and they reunite. But I didn't feel any sort of connection between the characters in the beginning either. So then when it was like a jumping ahead, I still was kind of like, why are you even like into each other? And I think the reason maybe too, there was something about like the reason that they like had to separate was like dumb. And I just remember thinking like, mm, it just felt very like, like lackluster and very like bland and it's pretty short too so I just don't remember like there being a lot of substance to it I don't know like I said I literally think I read this back in like the end of 2019 or very early 2020 I don't know I could I'm not kind of fuzzy on the details of this one but I just remember absolutely hating it and I thought I would like it because I love me a step sibling romance. And last one that I hated that I thought I would love is Dreams of 18 by Saffron Kent. Some of Saffron Kent's books are some of my absolute favorites. Medicine Man, The Unrequited, love some of my all time ride or dies. Uh, Bad Boy Blues I read recently, really enjoyed that one. Dreams of 18, I hated this. <laughs> For, I don't know why. I thought I would really like it. It's an age gap. It's a best friend's dad romance. But it, and I think like next door neighbor even. But I just remember hating it. And honestly, I don't know why. I think the hero, obviously he's kind of grumpy. And like Saffron Kent has a very specific style of heroines that you either like or don't like. I normally like them. But in this one, she was like very obsessive, which like Layla is too in the Unrequited, quite a bit. Like I'm with her on that. I don't know. In this one, I could never get on board with the heroine. And I just, I remember like thinking that the whole thing was just kind of like outlandish. Then she like goes to a remote town somewhere, I think, and the guy like, and she follows the guy to like this remote town or something. I don't know. I just remember not liking anything about it and being so disappointed because I loved some of Saffron Kent's other books. But yeah, for some reason, I just like, I want to block this one out of my mind. And I think I kind of have, like, I'm genuinely very fuzzy on the details, but I just remember absolutely hating it and being very surprised because I've had such great luck with other ones of her books. So anyways, that is it for books that I thought I would love, but ended up hating. So like I said, I am going to also do books I thought I would hate, but end up loving. But I think I'm probably going to do that in like early April or something, because I do still have the next two book draft videos to come at some point but then you know I got my April TBR to do I got my monthly wrap up we're gonna be busy so anyways that is it for today's video and I will see you when I see ya